All righty. Great stuff. Um, welcome, everybody, to another Just Chilled um, open day session. In this session, um, we are going to be making some different maps. Um, if you read the QOD um, wiki, which I will share with you now, just share my screen. Can you all see? All right. So for all the QGIS Open Days, if you are a new um, new to QGIS Open Days, all of them, of course, have a um, wiki which gives you all the information. Um, this is where you can get the links and the general description. So for this session, we're going to be making QGIS themed maps um, for the QGIS website. So these are completely your own maps. Uh, bring your own data. Bring your own ideas. Um, of any place on the world that you want to make it. And the point of this is that we, um, or the QGIS uh, community, is looking at updating the QGIS website to be even more awesome than it currently is. And we would like a choice of a whole bunch of different maps made by the community um, that we can then showcase on the new website. So we thought it would be cool um, if people made different maps um, for this time. Um, I'll share my screen and show kind of the vibe that I'm going for. Um, maybe, Jeremy, we can go over to you and you share your screen and see what you're up to. Um, Victoria and anybody else in the room who would like to share what they're currently doing. So the point of today is just to map together um, and make some beautiful maps. So um, that's the general description. but. When you are done with your map and you would like to submit, sorry, there's a very loud car going past. When you are done with your map, you can submit it into this Dropbox folder, which is where we're going to put um, all of the maps. Um, please make sure it's not an absolutely massive image. And please make sure it is an image like a PNG or a JPEG or something decent, because obviously we're using it as images on the website. So this is the Dropbox folder that you need to um, submit to so that you can just get from the wiki site. And it's an open Dropbox over there. And then um, the most important thing that I'd like to cover with you is, of course, QGIS has a visual style guide. This, of course, is on the QGIS.org website. Um, and it's part of the get involved in the community. And the style guide is as follow. So we have the original logos, et cetera, that you ought to use. And of course, it's the green, um, yellow, and orange um, colors. Keep going through, and there are different options for that. But the most important that I think is great for um, this session is knowing what colors QGIS is. So this is where you can get them. Um, I will put them up on the screen for the first, like, say, five minutes so people can have a look at them or copy them into a, a text document. So just get your hex codes so that you can use those um, when making a map. So, for example, I'm going to be making a color ramp to try <laughs> and make some mountains look qgis -y. Um, And these are the correct colors for this. So those are the greens, the lemon, and the orange. So that is where you can access the correct colors um, for your map. And yeah, I think we can just jump straight into map making. If everyone is happy with that. I actually have one thing to add. Um, since these maps are going to be public on the QGIS website, make sure that it's public data that you're using, since this is bring yes. your own data. Um, make sure that the sources that you're pulling data from allow this kind of usage. Oh. Absolutely. I 100% agree with that. And also, um, an important point is to um, attribute your data. So, of course, if you're using OpenStreetMap data, um, it is always best to attribute that data. It is in the license to do so. So, um, if you are using those different types of data, please make sure that in your final image, there is some kind of attribution to the data sources you are using. That is very definitely important. And most of the data sets that you use, if they are open, they will tell you how to attribute them um, on the site, on the wherever. Um, I don't know, Ethan, if you had a specific idea on mind on how to do that or? 
So no, nah, I just wanted to make a comment about so uh, you know people didn't bring private data or stuff that was that's private or not public data stuff that maybe 100%. someone wouldn't want public. One hundred percent, absolutely. All right. Um. So let me just hide that. So let's um get started. Does anyone have? Uh, does anyone want to sh share their screen first? Uh, I would have shared my screen. I just got to do a quick rethink. There's not data in the area I wanted to map. So give me a moment, and then I might be able to Alrighty. share my screen again. Cool. Well, then I will share mine. Um, so currently, I am working on a project. I thought it might be nice to have a really nice visualization of um general topography <laughs> but using the QGIS colors so i wanted to use um an area in south africa in the drakensberg which is an amazing mountain range you can see you know it's on the south african side it is quite impressive but on the lesotho side of the border it's even more so and you can actually see the border of the country mirrored in the mountain range in the crowns of the mountain range so I got this data, of course, using the SRTM downloader. That is where I got my data from. You will have to sign up um, with an account on Earth data. Of course, this is coming from NASA, um, et cetera. So that is where my data is coming from. It is open data to the best of my knowledge. <laughs> and of course, I will be um, giving attribution to that. So I. My map is pretty simple. All I want to do is try and make the nicest visualization of these mountains I can do <laughs> in QGIS. So I hope that makes a bit of sense. Um, if you are new to um, QGIS and you don't know this SRTM downloader, um, you can get it from the plugins. Um, if you go to manage and install plugins, and now of course it's going to think. If I go to my installed plugins, you can see it right here. Um, that is the plugin that you are going for. This will give you digital elevation model or DEM data. Um, you can see that it's tiles from the NASA server, etc. If you carry on going down, you can see all the different um, information available to you about this, um, etc. So that is where I am getting my data from currently um if i do want to add some roads etc to this which i might do um, maybe some rivers i might calculate the rivers or the drainage um following hans's guide because i am not a hydrogeologist in any way um and that may not happen in this um this section but that is my general plan and i want to try and make the coolest looking um model i can so you can see i've what i've Done. I'm just going to delete that. I was just seeing if there were any buildings. There are not. Uh, that was unintelligent. Well done, Amy. <laughs> See, this is where an undo button would be nice. I'm just going to make another copy of this. I don't mind. Be fine. I'm going to rename this one to be my dim. I want to pull it in again. I'm going to make it a hill shade and I'm going to turn it on. All right, there's a hill shade and it is half the opacity. And this hill shade looks a little bit odd. So I'm going to start playing with the general um, styling factors of this digital elevation model until it looks quite nice. Um, and I'm going to do that, of course, in the layer styling. Um, you can see here that here are our general um, DEM styling options. Um, I'm going to leave the azimuth as is, but the Z factor I'm going to actually change to be quite small. So something like um, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, I just find that the, giving the, the Z factor, which is kind of how it puts the shadows, <laughs> For want of a better word, I don't know, Ethan or anyone, if you have a better way of explaining Z factor, but it's it's the amount of shadow or the height of the shadow 
something about shadow. Um, and let's see if we make it multi-directional. Ooh, that makes it nice. You can see those valleys come out really, really nicely. Still think there's a little bit overshadowing. You can see now that I've made so multi-directional means there's light coming from multiple directions on on the onto the surface. So I think that okay. Ooh, that's too little. Okay. So I'm playing around with how the shadows fall to make the best version of this landscape, how I think it looks the best. So you can see this is starting to look really nice in terms of these really like craggy valleys and what I would expect it to look like in real life. Um, so that is just playing with the Z factor and seeing how that works. You can, of course, change the brightness and the saturation and the contrast, etc. You can look at how the resampling works. Um, I generally find if you zoom in quite extensively, you're going to get it very like blocky. So I'm going to change the zoomed in to cubic. I often find that makes it a little smoother and it looks nice in general. Um, but of course, that doesn't matter too much because for the map I'm making, I want it slightly more zoomed out so you get an idea of the um, full area um we can have a look and see if this gives us any change it's lightened a little bit i think i quite like that okay. so these are different types of resampling to give us this idea so i will tweak this hill shade a little bit more to get that 3d effect i want but then my next idea is to overlay that with um a slightly see-through you can see um no it must be my demo that's it no no there we go um <laughs> i was on the wrong layer um that i've made this a 50 percent opacity for the whole level and i've just added a single bad pseudo color and i've added just a general color ramp onto that um i want to try and make a color ramp that is QGIS inspired going from green to orange we'll see how it goes but for now, let's um, head over to someone else and see what other ideas are coming up. Um, if you have any questions, of course, I can't currently see my screen. I'm sorry. Um, but I'm going to hop out of here and hop into someone else's map. All righty. Is there anyone else keen to share? Should be coming up now. Ooh. All right. Tell us about your area, Jeremy. So... Uh, I was actually away. I, I was there last weekend up in this spot. So this over here. So these are just base. This is just basics. I haven't done any styling. I've just loaded the images in, not the images, the vector data in using the quick OSM plugin. So it draws the data from OSM for anyone interested. Same process as Amy showed, getting a plugin from the plugin, um, I guess, plugin manager. You just go plugins, manage, and then quick OSM very useful. So you run a map preset to get the roads and stuff. And then I did a second query for water because this, do that. this is Millie's, um, yeah, just outside of Mashado, but I know it's not very famous to like a lot of people outside of South Africa, but if you like go up to Vartfeld, Boerven, Mashado, Dalstrom, that part of South Africa, if you drive up to Mpumalanga, this is Millie's, it's a petrol stop. But they also they're quite well known for like their trout pies and trout and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I decided like since I was up there recently, I would map them because I, I actually wanted to map where I'd gone fishing recently. But I, there's no data for the river up there, so I can't exactly. I could digitize it, but it would take much longer than an hour. So I figured I'd do somewhere that had a bit of data, and then we can do some styling on the buildings to match the QGIS colors, and obviously give myself a nice background layer with the QGIS greens and maybe add some like false trees and stuff in a cool style but for the moment yeah i just decided i was gonna map somewhere that i'd been quite recently because it just that's a cool area to me <laughs> um, that is awesome <laughs> so essentially what i've got so far is just the rivers and then the roadways and the buildings and then i'm going to play around with some styling in a bit to make things look nicer so i was thinking of using QGIS as like orange for the highway obviously because national this is the n4 in south africa for anyone who knows like south africa at all this is the n4 
on our national highways. It is currently under roadworks, but I'm not going to let that appear on my map. <laughs> Brilliant stuff. Um, thanks, Jeremy. As you go, just let us know if you've changed any of the styling or want to show us something cool on how you're making your map. Um, I see, yeah, Ethan, I'll, you told me. Sorry, carry on, Jeremy. No, no, I, I, said, I was about to say, yeah, when I've got a bit more further, like when I've got further along, I'll show, pop back in and show like the styling that I've got too. Brilliant. It's just uh, for the moment, it's basic. I see in the comments, Ethan, you said I must try some blending modes. Can you? expand on that a little bit i, I know you are <laughs> i guess uh so i guess i should share uh, share my screen to show some stuff that would be uh, awesome let's see let's do this one yeah let's see okay everyone see my screen yes it looks amazing okay Look so <laughs> sorry i'm having a goal moment that's amazing okay so First, this is not 100% mine. Um, so there's a guy who uh, works for Esri. His name is John Nelson. And he posts a lot of styles over on their style, whatever, about all these creative styles. And he usually calls them all, oh, please steal this style. Of course, for him, the intended target audience is other Esri users. But mm, hey, mm. you said please steal the style. So don't mind if I do. Thank you so much, John, for letting us steal your style. So, and uh, Esri also decided to ingeniously use JSON files for all their new Arc Pro formats. Mm -hmm. So it's easier to look at. So I've been uh, recreating some of his styles in QGIS, and this is his felt style, generally. Still work in progress. So we've got the blue ocean. We've got uh, countries colored um and then this stitching effect stitching effect still quite isn't there yet i uh, got some colored buttons I, I needed a point layer and um a re feature request for uh future easter eggs uh can we have like a world's capital layer <laughs> oh i would love um, that I, I will talk to some some of the people i know who are in the know <laughs> So in the meantime, I just use the QGIS HackFest because they're points. Mm -hmm. So color them as buttons for this style. Um, this this doesn't use layer blending um, at the moment. Uh, and uh, the issue with layer blending is it forces your map to be rasterized in mm -hmm. exporting mm -hmm. uh, in terms of like PDFs and stuff. But for, uh, for this project, uh, since we're making maps that are going to be in a raster format anyways. Layer blending modes are definitely an ideal thing to use. So let me show you one that does use uh, blending modes. And I guess my famous, somehow famous, QGIS freestyle map that actually won. Um, yes, no, I recognize it as stunning. This does use layer blending modes. Um, mm -hmm. There's a lot going on. I've got polygon contours. I've got uh, not just hill shade, but I've also have sky view factor. Let me let me turn off these contours for now to save some processing time. Um, so this is just the regular hill shade because oh, for for those who don't know, the the DEM that made this was a random Python script. So for this free uh, QGIS freestyle, we were given a randomly generated DEM that we had to create anything we wanted from. We could create any data we wanted, but we could not bring in any existing data. So anything mm -hmm. on the map had to be either generated from processing tools or digitized by us. So this one uh, just took the DEM, made a hill shade. And you know, the hill shade looks nice, but it's lacking a lot of depth. Mm. So sky view factor terrain view factor there's also some other stuff there's slope S slopes a really cool one to see and th these are all being stacked on top of each other using layer blending modes so we can get some really cool effects the slope in and of itself looks pretty cool um, so instead of transparency, I have the um, the 
color DEM on the bottom of the stack. And then let's pop open the hill shade. And the hill shade is being multiplied over top. And then we have the slope. The slope is also being multiplied over top. And there's a couple other ones. Do I have one that's not? Okay, yeah. Sky view factor is soft light. There is a, a where's that decided to do that? There's a bunch of different blending modes that uh, one can use. Multiply, overlay, soft light are some of the big ones for overlaying stuff like this. So it's just creating various things from various processing uh, tools, stacking things on, and some contours. And the, the thing that took forever to render was these polygon contours. And it's frozen. <laughs> <laughs> It's QGIS. <laughs> we love it. <laughs> well, it's not really QGIS. It's generally the render, uh, the rendering power, or at least your memory power of your machine. There we go. Maybe. Oh, uh, that's because it was loading that layer into the style. Mm. Thing. Um, yeah, the, the, this one takes a while. Um, So that, that's how so I got this. Have, but, have you built that up with polygons that you've made from each of the contours? So there's actually a parameter in the GDAO contours tool. Mm -hmm. see. That um, actually generates polygons for you directly. Oh, cool. It's um, the GDAO contour tool. It's this dash P flag that generates polygons versus contour lines. Mm -hmm. It takes a good while longer to run. Um, the, the regular contour lines took uh, probably a couple minutes. This one took, uh, I think, a couple hours to run. <laughs> OK. But So you've definitely got to want it. <laughs> yeah, but the, the result is, is well worth it. Let me see. Um, another style that I had been working on, it's not yet complete, still work in progress. I just have a screenshot of it. You find it. It's using polygon contours and a, what was called a paper cut style. Show it here. Where you have like a paper oh, texture, uh, drop shadow. Um, it, to me, it still looks cartoony. It doesn't look good yet. But this know. is also I using like it. It's very much, you see, uh, go, hopping back to um, my laser engraving session, <laughs> that's exactly what we did. We made polygons out of the contours, and I cut them using my engraver and stuck them. And that, this map is exactly what that looks like. So I think it's so cool. And I, I like the shadowing underneath. Very, very cool. What would you like to improve about it? Um, I'm not a fan of the edges, the um, because uh, currently you may not be able to see it because of video compression, but um, there's there's black edging around it. Mm -hmm. Um, it sort of shouts fake. Uh, definitely change fix the drop shadow a little bit. Um, so for those who are interested, um, We're all interested. <laughs> Well, the, I'm going to show something um, inter, uh, slightly, possibly controversial. So the, like this controversial is controversial too. <laughs> this is Esri's um, creative styles gallery that they have. The, these are all made by John Nelson. Um, he, here's his paper cut one. Here's his felt style. That um, so there's a lot of fun stuff over here that I've been 
working on trying to recreate in, in QGIS. Mm, um, wow. this, this Firefly style actually might be somewhat familiar. We uh, must add these to the QGIS um, styles repository as well. I think that would be fantastic. Well, totally not selfless plug. <laughs> um, Firefly style is already done. And of course, oh, cool. to quote John Nelson, steal this Firefly style, please. Well, don't <laughs> mind if I do. So here is the Firefly style, including two gradients. Uh, there's one that loops around like the standard Firefly style. So it starts with red, ends with red. The no loop mm -hmm. gradient ends with orange. So you don't, so the start and end don't look the same. Okay. Um, I have a, lines, points, and then two sets of polygons. Um, the, the normal polygons have a transparency to them. And the inner glow ones also have a transparency, but also have an inner glow. I like the so, inner glow. <laughs> so this is available on the uh, Gugis Style Hub. And for those of you who are not familiar with this, uh, plugins.qgis.org slash styles. And there is available a ton of really awesome styles that people have made and contributed. This one might look- They really are amazing. There are so, so many. Tons. There's also other stuff too. Like um, some people have like sample projects for certain things. Um, like for instance, Klaus has one about his the mil using working with military grids. Tim posted one about his QGIS dashboard here. There's also processing models, a lot of fun stuff here, as well as 3D models, TARDIS. <laughs> and Anybody here a secret doctor? <laughs> And then some vector tile stuff. So th th this exists for those of you who don't know. So th that's where all the styles that I'm working on will eventually land when they're when they're done. So I guess I will stop sharing my screen. So there we go. No, I think that's awesome. I think as I'm working on um, my map, I'm going to ask you for some inputs there because I. I don't do this very often. I generally make a lot of 2D maps, so I thought I'd branch out, <laughs> challenge myself a little bit. Um, I don't yeah. know, um, Victoria, were you making a map? Do you want to just show what you're up to, what you're planning? Sure. Let me share my screen. Mm -hmm. Okay, Yasha. So um, I decided Ooh, to make Madagascar. yeah a, a vegetation map of uh, Madagascar using um, the Esri land cover data set from 2021. So trying to get the QGIS colors in there. Is that um, an open data set? I always get worried when I hear Esri. Yes, it is. <laughs> Um, okay brilliant yeah <laughs> so that's i got that in so i i'm picking backing off your idea of a dm so i'm hopefully just going to get an srt dm for the area and try to blend it in so it has like more depth in there awesome i think this is going to look absolutely amazing are you going to zoom in on a specific area um once I figure out how to get, uh, how it looks overall, then I'll pick the most beautiful place and zoom in there. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's brilliant. Alrighty. Um, is anyone else in the room making a map or coming up with something? Do you want to share? I was about to share and then I crashed my QGIS. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm making a map, but I don't know how 
it's not it's it's a fantasy map i started making it for for next month because i'm so excited um, oh everybody please do the 30-day map challenge yeah so thank you for reminding me that is coming up um all of the month of november um follow it on twitter our staff is getting together and making well trying to make a map for every day so definitely do that um yeah the yeah, should have at it my screen can everyone see my screen yeah so that's what i've come up with so far i love your um what is it kraken some people say kraken anyway i love your kraken thank you Cthulhu. <laughs> all right so talk us through your fantasy map um so i generated the world in i think it's called as god's world generator um and you can keep generating and deleting places or adding places until you kind of get a shape that you like and it also generates names but the names i got i didn't like so i just generated a whole lot and then picked the names i wanted and then renamed them um and then i used procreate to draw my mountains and my trees and the little sea monster as well. I'm thinking about adding a ship and maybe a castle as well. Fantastic. Yeah. I really like the theme that you've chosen for this. Of course it's for 30 day map challenge. So it's the, it's the, it's got a kind of sepia vibe to it. Um, mm. Can you, can you just show us those tools that you chatted about for anybody who's new and doesn't know where they are, how to get access to them? Okay, awesome. Let me. My browser is a bit of a mess, so excuse we'll that. We'll close our eyes for a second. You're in <laughs> abception. So this is the Asgars um, fantasy map generator, and you literally when you start, it generates a map for you like that, and then that's how it looks when you get it, and then if you click on the little thing, you can see what layers you want to activate it um so if i activate ice and then generate a map it'll show me where there's ice on my map um it can show you religion as well it can show you um temperatures as well populations if you go to style you can change the style of it um you can also look at the little attribute tables for for, for the different places as well which i thought was really cool and then you can export it sorry you can export <laughs> it um so that you can import it into qgis um so that's how i did that and then procreate is the apple drawing app um mm. so i can't really show you that and then who for makes, the, do you have any idea who makes asgar or anyone in the room because that looks really cool so I'm actually not sure, but maybe we could find out. You would think they would have, an, oh, <laughs> yeah, of course there is. Um, so this is actually through, I think it's through GitHub. Okay. Yeah. We must go find the repo. So I Absolutely. thought this was really cool. Yeah. And then there are quite a few you tutorials a on YouTube as well. And um, this was a lot of my inspiration here, this map here. So when I do all my um, attribution, I'm definitely going to mention all my inspiration as well. And then, yeah, so I used a lot of shadows um, for, I created different buffers. I'm not sure if I should include that one or not. I don't know if that's too much. But <laughs> a lot of shadows using draw the draw Ticks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so mm -hmm. I've got all of them ticked. <laughs> <laughs> more yeah, is more. So that's my map. Is that middle area on your map a uh, water body? Because um, it's the same as the sea. So yeah, it kind of so looks like was, a hole. Do you know uh, what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Do you what think I should you, add maybe, maybe I should add <laughs> some like. In a in a shadow or some water texture like I did here with the with the sea monster. Well, what what does the group think for that inner water? What should we do? An inner glow or a 
I, I don't know. Do we want to draw some like squiggly lines? Could we use the um the cos tan squiggly line jobby? Just make a tentacle oh. coming out of it, and it'll be really. <laughs> Well, there, there's the uh, exponential uh, coastline style that I think would look really cool with this uh, with this bat. Can you guide us to that? Where, where would we get that? Is it in the styles repository? Most likely. Let me check. Because <laughs> you can um, access the styles repository straight from QGIS. Um, it, the little button with the like a the dash the round and the square next to favorites i think if you click on that you can directly go to the uh, i think i'm blind where are you referring sorry to? sorry in the layer styling yeah that's sorry yeah Maybe that was mine yeah. <laughs> there we go so you should be able to search slash import export the styles there directly uh, yeah. Yeah, something like that. I don't know if you have to download them first. I know on Linux they're immediately imported. Um, what are you using? Windows? Windows. Okay. All the I... way. Jeremy, do you know? <laughs> uh, oh, I'm not they... on Windows anymore, remember? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You've joined, you've joined the cult. <laughs> I ported over as so I started working. <laughs> Brilliant stuff. All right. I think... I think that would be cool. I think, Theasha, we're going to check back in with you once you've um, done some styling on that um, water body. Okay, awesome. Yeah, I was actually very excited to share, so I'm, I'm glad I glad I did. No, it's, it's absolutely amazing. I can't wait to see what you come up with for the 30-day map challenge. And Found I it. think you ought to submit something like this for the QGIS one. Um, did you find it, Ethan? Yes. Where is it? Check the chat. Ah, brilliant. Thank you. All right. Anyone else in the room currently working on a map or wants to show us their screen of what they're working on? Uh, give me a moment. I think I just got it to work without crashing. Knowing you, Jeremy, it'll be an animated map and something high. It's not animated. I'm not going that far today. <laughs> okay. I don't think I could get the animation to open, so uh, that's way too big. Alrighty, I'm sorry. Again, one screen only. Um, just having a quick look. Um, fantasy maps. Hi, Ethan. Um, Zhang. Very, very cool. How did you achieve the texture of the land mass? Looks great. I don't know when Lord. Um, and I think it must be Ethan. He's talking about your um, felt um, option. How did you achieve that that texture? So I just created um, in layer styling. You can create like the different levels. I think that's what you call them. Um, and then I did a raster full of a um, a texture that I created in Procreate, and then put the opacity way down. Okay. Okay. Brilliant. All right. Any other shares, or should I go back to mine and um, we can have a look at those blending effects? Bl uh, blending oh, wait, modes can also work with those textures. Okay. No, ah, it crashed. Okay. Never mind. <laughs> All right. Let me share my screen. Okay. Let's pop back into QGIS. Alrighty, so I have this. Let's. I'm going to quickly make a color ramp that I think might be quite nice for the QGIS colors. Um, but then we can hop into the blending modes, um, and we can. Oh no, not contrast. That's not what I wanted. Um, and maybe Ethan, you can um, step me through those. As I say, I'm not used to you working with them, so I think that would be really cool. Um, sure. Awesome. All right, so let, let's go have a look um, at a color ramp. That'll be cool. I think I'm just going to create a new color ramp. Um, I want it to be a gradient, um, but using the QGIS colors um, of the green. I had the QGIS colors somewhere. 
didn't I? <laughs> um, here we go. And uh, we have all the little hex hex guides. So let's give the cutest dark green to this current dark green. So we want the cutest one. Awesome. Then I'm going to add a couple of um, little nodes to this because, of course, we want our lightest color to be cutest yellow. Um, uh, there we go. There's here. Please excuse that. We have a really cool map coming out soon. <laughs> and let's say that you, we want to be cutest yellow. Okay. And let's add some little nodes between here. Um, let's see what we can make. Let's make that the next green. This may not be the world's most efficient way to make a um, uh, color ramp. I don't know if anyone has any advice. This is my general go-to because it's what I learned along the way of me learning how to use QGIS by myself. So um, if anyone has a much more efficient way, please let me know. <laughs> Alrighty, that is our cutest green, and this one we're going to make cutest orange. Um, and hopefully that doesn't look too horrendous. We can always play around with it and see if we can get something nice. Alrighty, so that is our cutest color ram. Perhaps we grab the two hotter colors slightly more to the top because we want more of like a vegetation-y green at the bottom of our color ramp where the um, mountain and valleys are and the top to be a slightly hotter color because of course in Africa we don't get snow so maybe like a lighter yellow might be nice. So let's say okay. <laughs> that is very unusual. I quite like it though. <laughs> I'll work on it a bit. Um, all right so I'm going to leave that as our color ramp for now, but if you want to make your own QGIS color ramp, please have a look. That is my method for making them. Um, and I'm just going to save that color ramp so that I have it. Um, cool. Um, alrighty. So, Ethan, speak me through blending modes. So, I'm going to obviously turn off the opacity. Correct. Awesome. Let's do it. And go okay. back in. Yep. Mm -hmm. So go down right below the val the values. You'll see mode. Uh, 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 yep. Right there. Uh, layer rendering, uh, blending mode, where it says mm -hmm. normal. Yeah. Uh, we'll start off with multiply. Okay. <laughs> That's cool. Okay. Uh, so multiply it's tends to be muddy. darker. Yeah. So there's a couple other ones we can try. Uh, overlay. Righty, there we go. Oh, that's quite okay. cool. It looks a little metallic. And then oh, uh, we can try. Uh, we can try soft light. That looks a little more natural. Yeah. So another thing you can do is you can uh, change the hill shade colors, mm. um, or the um, the amount of gray and the colors in it. Let's have um, a look at doing that. Maybe if I take us our, our contrast a little down no i don't like that at all okay um, nope. and then brightness up Ooh, okay the, let's the, turn off top remember again. the uh the, the hill shade you're not going to see by itself so it's going to be working with um the, these blending modes so if you want to mm -hmm. go back to the um the color ramp and switch it to multiply that's the hill shade oh damn sorry <laughs> there we go got it okay multiply and then go Ooh. back to the, the, leaving that on, go back to the hill shade and start messing with those settings again, the brightness, saturation, and contrast. Ooh. And then see how it affects the blending. 
That is very cool. Okay, saturation doesn't do much. If we contrast so that's because that. it's a grayscale image, so saturation mm. really won't do anything. So I'm just going to go full extreme so we can see what it does. So obviously that is black and white. That's the highest contrast you can get. And if you lower your contrast, it's going to be more sort of levels of gray. Gamma is a fun one to play around with, but do it very subtly. All righty. So should we go up by one? Okay. Let's see, it is changing up some things. So in a nutshell, what is gamma doing for us? Um, it, it's a residual from the days of CRT screens. Mm -hmm. It's how images are encoded and decoded. Um, so it, it, for me, it's hard to explain like what it's actually doing. There's like a Wikipedia page if you really wanted to know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the g gamma comes from that. Yeah, no, we don't want to invert the colors. Not at all. Okay. <laughs> So the, how about try taking the gamma the other direction? So the, the baseline for gamma is one. Yeah. Okay, so that appears to be giving us a lot more sort of shadow. Um, yeah, but it's not quite like contrast. It, it does work differently. Mm, mm. I quite like this metallic vibe this is giving. <laughs> it doesn't look like mountains, but it looks really interesting. Looks more like wrinkled aluminum foil. Yes, exactly. We've got hugest, hugest tin foil. <laughs> I love it. Alrighty. Well, thanks so much for showing me more about the blending modes. I really, I did enjoy that a lot. Um, and, you know, just playing with these things. For anyone who's new to this, this is how you learn you know, and create your own styles and create things that you like or would reuse in maps in your real life, real job. Um, you know, playing like this is, is one of the most useful learning techniques I know of. Um, so I'm going to pop out of here because I'm starting to enjoy how this looks and what it's going to be like. And I'd just like to check in with everyone else because I'm obviously <laughs> aware of the time. We can go a little bit over, but not too much. Everyone has things to do. But I'd like to just check in with whoever else is mapping with us. And when you are finished or do want to contribute a map, um, I would like to remind you to just go to the QGIS uh, Open Day Wiki. This is the one for October. So it's, of course, on GitHub. Um, and please submit your map into this Dropbox folder that I have um, led you to. Um, remember, all the information for this map is there. So I'm going to stop showing my screen and let's hop over. Jeremy, have you got yourself not to crash? Yeah. Awesome. It was a picnic error. Oh, okay. Per uh, problem in chair, not in computer. Yeah. So what <laughs> I was kept crashing my computers on is these lines. Um, Cause I, I watched a live stream that Niall gave, uh, when was it like two, three years ago? Uh, 10 months ago, okay, never mind, not that long. So it was, oh, it was Shout last, out year, to Niall last year. Yeah, Niall Dawson, very key guy in QGIS for anyone who doesn't know. Um, so he showed this technique where he takes, he makes these randomized lines using QGIS's expression editor. And you can see like they just, it adds texture, texture to water. And then the other one he does, which I thought was amazing, was he does a shape burst full for his water. And you can see, so you can play around with the settings a bit. Um, and you can get this like look of almost like shallow to deep water if you just play around with it a bit. And it's just, it's, yeah, that's what I kept crashing my QGIS on was the randomized waves because I was doing the wrong thing. I was trying to make QGIS do something impossible and it finally clicked that I was being stupid. Um, but you, <laughs> so you can see like that's kind of what I've got to now just with some basic styling. You can see like the dam, the dam, um, obviously like, so the fill, you can see that's a, like that fill to me is a bit thick. So what I generally tend to do is I like sit there and I just drop it a bit. You can see it slowly fades out and gives you this like really cool effect. Um, and it's just one of those things like I picked up watching that live stream. So that's what I've been working mm -hmm. on currently, just getting that texturing in the dam. 
And then the other one I'm going to do just now is actually add a, a base map vector layer. So I'm going to essentially take my dam layer, invert it, and then do also do a reverse shape burst fill um, just to give it like that texture of going from high land to like cliff face on the edge of the water. It's actually not quite cliff face, but a slope. Um, so I can do it now. So you just duplicate okay. the layer, enable it, and then you go inverted polygons. You can see it gives me a horrible mess there. But <laughs> if I take where the cue just styles. Um, actually had you guys go to dinner. If I take something, I'll change these colors in a bit. You can kind of do something like this. Um, and you kind of just play around with that and you get quite a nice looking like effect of going from like flat ground and then around the water areas, you'll have like a slight slope, obviously down into the water body. Um, Obviously also, I mean, naturally, down. you would have greener vegetation, etc., around a water body. I mean, in any riparian yeah, area, you would have even, that. even if you weren't going for realism like that, if you just have a darker color over here and a lighter color here, it just gives you that like 3D effect without actually going into the 3D concept. Um, mm. Now, there's a very good job of explaining it in the live stream. It's the festive, what is it called? Uh, let me just look for it quickly on my other screen. <laughs> Festive freestyle island mapping with Niall Dawson was streamed on the QGIS channel. Very interesting stuff to go through if you want to go listen to some masters talk about work. It's awesome to watch. Um, Brilliant stuff. Um, I see, Louisa, you said you like it. I'm so glad you like my QGIS tinfoil. <laughs> um, let's um, pop in with Victoria and see where you're going with um, Madagascar and your land use. Was it land use or land cover? Uh uh, vegetation. Uh, sorry, I won't ah. be able to share my screen because I'm downloading um, a data set that seems to be con con like consuming all my bandwidth. Oh, no, that's all right. And then, um, Fiasha, have you done any on your um, water body? Not yet. I was watching what everyone else was doing. But once I've done it, I'll update everyone. Brilliant. All righty. Well, then uh, we only have about four minutes left. I don't know if anyone has any questions or comments. I uh, Please, I encourage you to... Um, oh, wait, my camera is off. Hi, everyone. You can see my nice profile picture. Um, I do encourage you to make a map for... Hi, Tim. Um, for the QGIS website. We are busy um, putting it together, uh, making it a little bit more visually stimulating, you know, we all use QGIS to make these beautiful maps, and we think that we really should showcase them. So um, thank you all for joining us. Thank you, Ethan, so much for your um, knowledge and showing us the um, styles repository and those amazing styles you are bringing um, over. And I, I'm thinking of having a session next month on those, um, if you're keen. I guess. <laughs> No, that would be awesome. I think they're absolutely amazing. I do have one um, thing I do want to add, though, with this stuff. Um, there was, I can't remember where I saw it, floating around somewhere, um, the, this RVT visualization stuff. There's a plugin for um, uh, RVT that gives brings a bunch of extra processing plugins that work with um, uh, DEMs. You give it a DEM and it creates all these other layers. That's, that's where I got like the slope, the... Um, uh the positive openness sky view factor and stuff like that so let me share this real quick because i've got so for those of you who want to take a screenshot now's the time now's <laughs> the time so so for rvt visual visualization layers this is the uh, order stack so up top you put the uh you put the sky view factor and the it's a grayscale ramp that's order from black to white and you set it to multiply positive openness also black to white overlay slope now this this is the different one this goes backwards this goes white to black and this gets set to multiply and then you, you do a multi-directional hill shade black to white multiply and then this time on the bottom of the stack is your dem with your color ramp set to normal blending 
So that, that gives you um, a lot of extra detail. I actually use this stack with stuff uh, for projects that I work on because it gives you a lot more detail in the uh, topography than standard Hillshade. And uh, there was a paper that was written that shows its uh, usage in archaeology. That's amazing. I'm definitely going to apply that to my QGIS tinfoil and see what I can come <laughs> up with. Might look less like tinfoil at the end of that. <laughs> I really hope so. <laughs> All right. Um, thanks so much, M, for posting to Telegram. Um, that is awesome. I'm going to go and have a quick look. But I think for today, that is going to be where I'm going to end. Um, thank you so much, everyone, for being so involved. Today was definitely just a community session. And it was so fantastic to have so many people here. Um, next month, we already have some fantastic um, talks lined up um, by the community members, etc. So I will definitely be posting the next wiki very, very soon. Um, because, of course, we have a whole bunch of things lined up. Um, and those are my last comments. I don't know if there are any last people who want to just check in. All right. Then brilliant stuff. Um, please remember to submit your maps to that Dropbox folder. And um, please use the QGIS colors um, as and when you like. If you'd like to make a hyper-realistic map, you may also do that. Um, and yeah, we will then carry on to bring those into the QGIS website. And I'm sure Tim and I will do a session um, bringing that all together and showing the community where we've gotten to. Thank you everyone for joining the QGIS open day for today. Um, and all the best until next month. All right, folks. We